ready, Almighty King of Glory, to listen, Almighty King of Glory, and to understand. Almighty Father, be with us, O God. Send your Holy Spirit to be with us, Almighty King of Glory. Lead us till the end. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Yeah, we're going to sing two worship songs. Yeah, and we're going to listen to the word of God. Hakuna mungu mwingine kama wewe. We bless your name. Tunakuabudu Bwana. Tunakuabudu. Tunakuabudu. Tuna Jesus, 
We thank you, our mighty Father. We thank you, mighty King of glory, for your love. We thank you, mighty King of glory, for each and every opportunity that you have given unto our lives, O oh God. We say thank you, O mighty King of glory, because you are a Messiah in our lives, O oh God. We say thank you, O mighty King of glory, because it is you who has guided us, O mighty King of glory, till this far, O mighty King of glory. We say thank you, O mighty King of glory, because, O mighty King of glory, it is you, mighty King of glory, who abides with us, O mighty King of glory, during times of trouble, O mighty Father. It is you, mighty King of glory, who has always been our anchor, O mighty Father. We say thank you, mighty King of glory. Truly there is none like you, mighty King of glory. Hakuna wakulinganishwa na wewe mungu wajabu. Hakuna mungu mwingine kama wewe. We say thank you, mighty King of glory, because, O mighty King of glory, we cannot go without you, mighty King of glory. O Almighty King of glory, ask for your presence, Almighty King of glory. As we start, Almighty King of glory, we need your spirit, Almighty King of glory, to go with us, O God. Send us your Holy Spirit, Almighty King of glory, to guide and counsel us, Almighty King of glory. Thank you, Almighty King of glory, because you are going to be with us, Almighty Father. Almighty King of glory, we invite you in our lives, O God, that you may guide us, Almighty King of glory, that you may fill our hearts, O God with your love, almighty King of glory. Oh, we say thank you, almighty King of glory. There is none like you, God. And it is in your mighty name, O oh God, that we do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. And with that, we would like to invite our reverend to continue with us, to bring to us the word of God. Thank you. the name of Jesus. It is yet another great evening. We may be seated even as we release our worship team. Thank you for choosing to be with us tonight. We are gathered in the presence of God. I want to say that even in your house or in your office right where you are, I want you now to know that that office or that house is converted to be a place where the Lord will minister to your life. So we are coming to you with the love of Jesus, and I thank God that you have chosen to be in his presence. I remember a story of uh, Mary and Martha, and uh, the Bible says that uh, there was uh, a kind of a war in the house because... Uh, uh, Mother was busy trying to prepare a meal for Jesus, but Mary chose to be at the feet. And the Bible says that uh, uh, mother started complaining, why can't you ask my sister to come and help me prepare this meal? Jesus said to mother, this Mary has chosen the best place. And I thank God that you have chosen the best place. The best place is to be where the Lord is. Just like David says, one day in your presence is better than a thousand elsewhere. He says, I could rather be a watchman in your house huh, than to spend years or days in the tents of the wicked. So being in the presence of God is something very powerful because in his presence, you will hear his voice. You will get a word of encouragement that will take you through the journey of life. And I believe tonight, a word will be dropped in your spirit. A word that will encourage you, that will lift you up, that will also challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to go back to my teaching that I've been doing for the last two weeks. I've been talking about navigating through storms. Navigating through storms. And uh, we are looking at Luke chapter number 8 from verse 22 to verse 25. Navigating through storms. And the Bible says in Luke chapter number 8 from verse 22. The Bible says, let me get it in my Bible, verses 22. The Bible says, all right. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a port with his disciples. That certain day can be the day you are going through right now. 
It could be the day that you are in right now. It could be the, a certain day. And Jesus got into the boat with his disciples. And he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of, this, of the lake. And they launched out. The Bible records, but as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling with water. And were in Jehobadi. The Bible says, verse 24, And they came to him and woke him up, or woke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the wrenching of water, and they ceased and there was calm. The Bible says, But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds, and water and they obey him we have been looking at how you can navigate through your storms and we can be calm some guidelines from the scriptures that we have read the bible says jesus tells his, his disciples let us cross over to the other side of the lake and they launched out in the middle of the lake storms arose and i've said that in this journey of life there will be storms and i've said storms can come in many ways it could be a battle with a disease it could be a natural calamity that you are facing praise the name of jesus and when that storm comes in whatever way or through whatever avenue whether it is an attack whether it is a loss of job or it is a natural calamity you need to know how to navigate through it and i've given you quite a, several uh, ways you can navigate through your storm and i've said number one identify the cause of the storm then i've said number two use your knowledge and experience then i've said number three remember the promises of god on wednesday i talked about calling on the help of God you need to call on the help of God to navigate through your storm then tonight I want to take you to another thing you need to do to navigate through your storms you need to open your ears to hear what God says when you call on the help of God you need to open up your ears to hear what God says. When you call on the help of God, as I said last week, God can answer or respond by telling you what to do to come out of your storm. God can respond, I said, by silencing the storm, by rescuing you from the storm, or by giving you a solution to your storm. He can respond by showing you the way out. He can respond by fighting for you. But also when you call on the help of God, number five, you need to open your ears to hear what God says. Praise the name of Jesus. There are divine instructions which God gives to us when we are in a storm. Those divine instructions will help you to know what to do to navigate out of your storm. Divine instructions come to help you know what to do to come out of your storm. So God can drop a word in your spirit and that word when acted upon will be the solution or will be the word that will help you or show you what to do to come out of your storm and i want us to pick several scriptures from the bible to show you how god gave divine instructions that he helped the people come out of their storms john chapter number two from verse one john chapter number two 
from verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. I said on Wednesday, you need to know that in your storm, Jesus is with you. In your storm, Jesus is with you. The Bible says, Jesus and his disciples were there. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. So you can imagine, this is somebody's wedding. And in a wedding, you want everything to run smoothly. But here is a situation that in a wedding where you have invited guests, where you want things to run well, something comes to interrupt your wedding. And the Bible says a very important component of the wedding uh, was finished. The Bible says that component was wine. And the Bible records that the master of ceremony uh, was not actually aware. The Bible says during the wedding, the wine was used up or was finished. What happened? Let's go back to first three, please. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Thank God Jesus was in the wedding and when the wine ceased they told him these people have gotten into trouble that is why I said in your storm you need to call on the help of God the mother of Jesus knew that when they informed Jesus there will be an intervention. There will be a solution. Verse 4, the Bible says, Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. I said sometimes you might call upon the Lord, and it seems as if he has remained silent. But look at what happens. Let's maintain the scripture. His mother said to the servants, even when Jesus says, my hour has not yet come, his mother knew Jesus will give a solution. Jesus will show them the way out. What did the mother say to the servants? Whatever he says to you, do it praise the name of Jesus the mother knew Jesus is going to give divine instructions praise the name of Jesus Jesus is going to give divine instructions so he says whatever he says to you do it praise the name of Jesus praise the name of Jesus verse 6 now there were set there six water pots according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water and they fill them to the brim. So Jesus is giving divine instructions in showing them what to do praise the name of jesus he says put the water in the gardens put the water and the bible says they put the water to the brim so they followed they had what the lord said and they followed the instructions then he says to them draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast and they took it uh, verse 9 
when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from but the servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom verse 10 and he said to him every man at the beginning sets out the good wine and when the guests have well drunk then the inferior you have kept the good wine until now i want you to look at those scriptures the wine was finished that was a storm how do i treat my guests what do i say to the master of ceremony how will really i handle the situation when the mother of jesus realized the wine is finished she told jesus praise the name of jesus that is calling on the help of god and the bible says jesus wants to exonerate himself from the blame he says what do i have to do with this situation does it concern me that they don't have wine I want you to know this does not mean that Jesus does not care because when we read on we discover he gives a solution amen but how does the solution come it comes in form of instructions amen he tells them what they need to do and I thank God the mother of Jesus had told the servants whatever he says to you do it praise the name of Jesus and the Bible says there were gallons holding 20 to 30 gallons and Jesus started to give instructions this is what I call divine instructions may the Lord open your ears to hear what he says in your storm when the servants followed the instructions they put the water in the gardens and then Jesus says to them now draw the water and they drew the water and what does the Bible say when they took the water that had been turned to wine to the master of ceremony he was frustrated he said why did you keep the good wine to this particular time why did you bring the good wine then when we are filled or when we are drunk you could bring the inferior why have you kept the best praise the name of jesus in other words when they followed the instructions they got better results they got good wine better than the one they had been taking praise the name of jesus and that is why i have kept on saying that when you come out of that storm you are alive will be better than when you go to the storm praise the name of jesus the wine was better but how did they get out of the storm they followed divine in instructions god will give you divine instructions in that storm oh yes he will tell you what to do he will show you what you need to do he will help you understand the steps you need to take to get out of your storm and yours is to follow you know sometimes we fail to follow the instructions of god because sometimes they sound foolish they sound unrealistic they sound uncivilized they sound primitive but I want you to know the foolishness of God 
is far above the wisdom of men. Whatever he says to you, do it. Hallelujah. In your storm, open your ears to hear what God says to you. In every storm, ears must be attentive to the voice of God. Your ears must be attentive to the voice of God. We see in the Bible, Moses leading the children of Israel to the promised land. Though he did not get there, but he reads them. And while he's reading them, they went through many storms in the wilderness. But every time Moses listened to divine instructions from the Lord, he always listened to what God was saying in every storm that they found themselves in. Sometimes God could say, lift up your Lord and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. Praise the name of Jesus. You know that sounds primitive. It is, it is foolishness to raise up a piece of wood towards the sea. Uh -huh. It doesn't make sense. You could have said, why can't they give us swimming costumes? Why can't they give us oxygen containers we put on the back of our, on our backs and then dive into the sea? Praise the name of Jesus. Because that sounds civilized. That sounds modern. That sounds wise. But he says to Moses, this is the Red Sea. Raise up your rod. Stretch it towards the sea. Ah! And it will divide. And so it was. When he followed the instructions, the sea parted. Ah! And they crossed over on the dry land. And the Bible says after they go to the other side, God tells him, stretch it again and the water will come back wow why can't the water just come back why does he have to stretch his rod again he wants moses to follow his instructions he wants to see whether he can hear and do what he says i pray that you will not be stuck in your storm because your ears are shut because your ears are heavy right now by the grace of God upon my life I command your ears to open to the voice of God hallelujah sometimes they come and they have no water what does God do he tells Moses take your rod again and go and strike a rock ladies and gentlemen you don't expect water to come out of a rock and more so in the wilderness more so in a dry land you could expect water to come out of a rock at least in a in a good climate maybe from a mountain a mountain or a forest mountain a place where there is rain but here they are in the wilderness and god tells Moses strike the rock and water will come out praise the name of Jesus what happens Moses obeys I pray that God will find people in our generation who will obey who will hear what he says and do it whether it makes sense or not whether it seems it will work or it seems it cannot work that God will find people who foolishly obey him when you are going through your storm get out your wisdom forget about 
what you think is right hear God and do what he says hear God and do what he says so I look through the Bible and even when you read through the plagues that struck Egypt they came about through hearing and doing hearing and acting I see God starting to speak to you starting to say to you clearly what you need to do praise the name of Jesus not only Moses or the the wedding in Cana of Galilee but when you read through the Bible you see quite a number of people who were given divine instructions Naaman for example the Bible says he was a commander of the Syrian army and when the Syrian army had gone to battle against Israel they captured a young girl and he was brought back to Syria and became a slave to Naaman a commander of the army and the Bible says Naaman was a labor praise the name of Jesus so this young girl looks at Naaman she sees the struggles of, of, of her master praise the name of Jesus every time she sees the struggles then she whispers to the wife of Naaman and says if only my master could have gone back to our land there is a prophet of God who will heal this sickness so the wife whispers to Naaman and Naaman seeks the permission of the king to travel praise the name of Jesus to go and see the prophet of God when Naaman comes to Israel and reports to the king gives the, the letter to the king the king tosses his clothes he wonders what is this is this man or has this man come to provoke us for war but Elisha received the report that a, a, a man has come to seek for healing in this kingdom praise the name of Jesus and Elisha sends a word to the king and he says let that man come to me praise the name of Jesus can you give me second Kings chapter number five from verse eight let us see what happens from verse eight second Kings please so it was when Elisha the man of God had that the king of Israel had torn his clothes that he sent to the king saying why have you torn your clothes please let him come to me and they shall know that there is a prophet in Israel then Naaman went with his horses and chariot and he stood at the door of Elisha's house and Elisha sent a messenger to him saying go and wash in Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean those are instructions go and wash in Jordan not once not twice why can't I wash three times <laughs> why can't I wash myself once praise the name of Jesus the instructions of God as I've said sometimes will sound ridiculous why seven times let's read on the Bible says the Naaman became furious Naaman was educated like you he was wise like you he was clever he saw this is foolishness this man has despised me does he know I am a leader a commander of the army of Syria how can he tell me to go and do such a foolish thing you are watching me today <laughs> many times you have missed God you have missed the intervention of God because you have refused to hear we can go back to the scripture please he became furious and went away and said indeed I said to myself 
he will surely come out to me. He knew the formula of how it should be done. God will not do it your way. I'm saying God will not do it your way. He will not do it the way he did for another one. God does not have a formula. It is only mathematics that has a formula. And the physics and the chemistry. The things of God do not have a formula. The things of God have divine instructions. What he tells you today, he will tell another one differently. Amen. And many times we are used to be prayed for. We are used to be laid hands on. We are used to, to be made to fall. That is when we know now God has come to visit me. God might not do all those things. He might not do them. He might only tell you one thing. And that one thing will be your source of victory. It will be the basis upon which you will come out of your storm. He said maybe he could come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord is God and wave his hands over, over the place and heal my leprosy. He becomes furious. Let's read on. And not the apana and pa, palpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. He's saying, why are you telling me to go and wash myself in, in River Jordan when we have better rivers in our land? We have apana and pa, palpa, rivers of Damascus, which are better than the rivers of the river Jordan. Could I not wash in them? God did not tell him to go and wash in Apana and Palpa. He said, go and wash in Jordan. Are you listening to me? So he turned and went away in a range. Verse 13. Now look at what is happening. And the servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, could you not have done it? How much more then? When he says to you, wash and be clean. Verse 14. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And what happened? And his flesh was restored, like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. In other words, he came out of his storm only when he had and did what the Lord said. And he refused and go back to Syria and go back to the good rivers of Damascus. He could go back with his leprosy. He could die of the disease. But when he followed the instructions, he received his healing. My friend, you have stuck in your stomach for a long time. You want God to come your way or in your own way. You want God to give you the job. You want God to give you the money. God might not give you the money. He might only give you an idea. And when you follow the idea, money will come. Huh? God might just be whispering to you, you need to seek for forgiveness. Go and seek for forgiveness from your spouse and your marriage will be healed. But because of the pride and the arrogance from where you come from, because you know as men from this community, we never humble ourselves before women. You cannot humble and heal your marriage. You cannot just come down and say, I'm sorry. You cannot come down and say, forgive me. Huh? Praise the name of Jesus. Maybe God is saying to you, go to that man of God. He will lay his hand on you and you will be healed. But because you despise men of God, <laughs> you despise men of God, you are not willing. I want to say to you, your solution is in hearing and doing what he says to you. Praise the name of Jesus. 
when you hear you will come out of your storm sometimes i wonder why jesus could he give some instructions to some people and i'm wondering especially what he said to a blind man i want to read this story in john chapter number nine john chapter number nine are we moving on well together now as jesus passed by he saw a man who was born who was blind from path and his disciples asked him saying rabbi who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind jesus answered neither this man nor his parents sinned but that the works of god should be revealed in him i must work the works of him who sent me while it is day the night is coming where no one can work as long as i'm in the world i am the light of the world when he had said these things look at this he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva even the method is not hygienic especially at this particular time we don't want to come into contact with somebody's saliva he spit on them on the clay and made saliva uh, with his saliva and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay look at the instructions verse 7 and they said to him go wash in the pool of shiroham which is translated sent so he went and washed and they came back doing what seeing now i want to ask you a question how did a blind man find his way to the pool how did he find his way he was blind but jesus has given instructions go and wash in the pool not in the tap not in a basin but in a pool praise the name of jesus and it does not man matter how this man got to the pool but when he followed the instructions he came back seeing there is a solution you will navigate out of your storm ah you will get out of your storm but you need to hear what the lord is saying praise the name of jesus some of you will be told things and you wonder whether it is god who is speaking but today i'm going to pray for you that your ears will be open praise the name of jesus go and wash a blind man are we together so whether he knew the root or he did not know but the instructions were go and wash if it is in these days we will say we are being unfair to the physically challenged how can we tell a physically challenged person to go and wash huh? there is another story of a sick man 38 years he has been stuck at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years and jesus gets there on a sabbath day and he asks him do you want to be made well in john chapter number five and this man starts to give stories jesus tells this man stand up take your bed and go home or oh, and walk 38 years lying you can't walk immediately the steps have been destabilized the balance has been lost but he tells him rise up take your bed and walk what happened immediately he arose and you need to know it was a sabbath day it was against the rules of the jews so sometimes god can give you instructions that are not constitutionally right that are not aligned with the rules and regulations of your country praise the name of jesus what do you need to do we go back to the mother of jesus whatever he says to you come on whatever he says to you hallelujah even if it goes against the rules and regulations that you know even if it tra it steps out of the boundaries of your religion and it tells you this is what you need to do whatever he says to you whether it is 
for your religion or against your religion whether it is comfortable with the rules and regulations that you know where if he says to you do it that will help you come out of your storm the blind man came back seeing the people in the wedding received a better wine Naaman, a leper from Syria went back healed with a new skin the skin like that of a baby I love the Bible praise the name of Jesus Moses found his way and the Israelites through the Red Sea water came flowing out of a rock are you hearing me praise the name of Jesus why he had given them instructions he had spoken a word concerning their storm and immediately they obeyed what the Lord said hallelujah God gave them away they came out of their storm somebody say amen sometime the disciples of of Jesus in fact even before they became disciples although later on another miracle like that was performed you remember when he comes to the lake and he finds these people have worked the whole night they caught nothing the whole night he tells Peter can I use your pot to preach he says yes he pulled a little bit he preached after preaching what did he say he gave divine instructions round your net to the deep for a catch and the Peter says we have been here the whole night and we caught nothing but at your word but at your word you need to reach a point where you say I do not understand what God is saying but at his word I am going to do what he says but at his word he said but at your word we will go back and you see fish does not come out at during the day the reason why they go fishing at night is because that is when fish comes near the service during the day they go deeper you cannot reach where they are so you go at night when they come up are you listening to me but here comes Jesus with the divine instructions go round into the deep during the day when there is sunshine and the Bible says the catch was great they had to call for help because they caught fish that they had never caught even the apostle was not prepared to to handle the weight it was too much but how did they get the solution they had and they did I see you doing what the Lord says as you listen to me maybe you are blaming yourself you are saying I'm sure many times God has spoken to me but I refuse to hear now forget about what is gone start hearing him now start hearing him now and he will give you guidelines he will give you instructions he will give you terms and conditions that you need to follow to navigate out of your storm hallelujah can you say a big hallelujah right now in the name of Jesus I command your ears to open up to receive divine instructions I fix my eye my, my, my fingers in your ears and I command them to open you have been deaf to the voice of God now I command your ears to start hearing what the Lord says and I declare this evening may the voice of God be so clear that you will not doubt may it be so simple that you will not need an interpreter I declare may God never speak to you in a complicated manner that you need to look for me or to look for a pastor to interpret may God give you simple clear instructions on what to do in your storm and as you do what he says you will navigate out you will come out better if Naaman came out better if Moses became better if the blind man was able to see 
if, the, if they got better wine, who says your case will make, you, will make your situation worse? Your case, as you hear the Lord, you will come out better, you will come out victorious, you will come out triumphant in Jesus' name. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every ear right now. Open to hear the voice of God. To receive the instructions from the Father. And now I pray for the ability to act on what you say to us. I pray for the boldness and the courage to act on the voice of God in the name of Jesus Christ for therein is our victory for therein is the way that will enable us to navigate and come out of the storm in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and today I pray for my viewers that Lord you will bring them out better you will bring them out more glorious you will bring them out more powerful even as they obey your voice and hearken to your instructions in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight I pray against the voices of confusion. The voices propagated from the kingdom of darkness. I silence them right now. I command our ears are shut to the voice of the devil and the voices propagated by the agents of the devil. And now I pray that our ears are open to hear your voice. You want us better. You want us glorious. You want us victorious. And that is what will happen as we hear and do what you say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God will speak. God will speak to you. God will speak to you. God will show you what to do. He will not allow you to wallow. In darkness you will not be walking around looking for the path it will show you the path and as you follow the path as you follow the instructions your miracle is at hand your victory is sure your breakthrough will be guaranteed in Jesus name amen I want you to speak to us let us know how the Lord is speaking to you let us know how the word of God is coming to you. Let us know whether we are of help to you through this message in the name of Jesus. You can do that by writing a comment on our page and letting us know how we are reaching you. The Lord bless you. The Lord be with you. And may you come out of your storm in the name of Jesus. We present our paper on the screen. That is a baby that can enable you to give an offering and to support the work of God. We are seated here to represent the kingdom of God. And you can be a partaker through your offering. You can partake by giving. Do it in support to what the Lord is doing in the name of Jesus. At this particular time when the church is fighting to come out of this battle of closing the congregations we need faithful sons and daughters of the kingdom who will be faithful with their giving so that the work of the Lord will continue so get into your pocket get into your phone give an offering and the Lord will bless you in Jesus name till Sunday we are coming to you Sunday 10 in the morning the Lord bless you and may your ears be attentive to the voice of God in Jesus name amen the Lord bless you
to the lost around And let your love, Lord, move me to action Mi mi ni sahid Mi mi ni sahid I will go to the ends of the world Mi mi ni sahid